Hello friends, I am CA Harish Krishnan. I will be dealing in information technology and strategic management. Been in practice for the last four years and I have been dealing in information technology all throughout my practicing career. Right. So let's go ahead with discussing about information technology which is one of your uh, subjects in group 2. Now group 2 being one of the very important groups uh, from the CIPCC point of view has a uh, couple of very important theory subjects in terms of auditing and assurance and information technology and strategic management. Right. So I'm going I'm here to make your life easy with respect to these two subjects. Right. So in our first base let's go ahead and talk about information technology and then probably after this we will continue with strategic management. Now, information technology as such has couple of words in its title information and technology. Now, one of the very important things that we need to understand before is we need to understand the title very clearly. Now, for instance, you are reading a book, right? You are reading a book called the Income Tax Act. So, when you pick up the Income Tax Act and if I am just giving you a book, say Income Tax Act, you will not be clear as to which country's income tax it is or when it was established or by what act it was passed. So it's very important that we check the title very clearly. So we say Income Tax Act 1961 of India. So that's when the title signifies what is contained in that particular book. For instance, if you pick up the Income Tax Act again, so you will see that all the provisions related to taxation in India will be discussed in that book. For instance, when we go to a movie, right, the title is set up in such a way that it is pretty catchy. So what happens is, you know, the movie is based on the title so that, you know, it attracts people. So that is the significance of title. So it's very important that we spend some time in understanding these words, information and technology. Right? So straight away, getting to the point, information and technology, as you see, the two parts of this information and technology. Let's first concentrate on this particular word called information. Now, when you're talking about information, what exactly is information? So, in here, you're supposed to look at information is data. But if I stop it there, that doesn't give a meaning because data and information are two different English words. And how are you exactly going to differentiate between them now? So, proceeding further, when he says, Information is data that has been processed, that has been processed. Information is data that has been processed. So information is a processed form of data. Now, one more important question that arises at this point in time is, okay, if information is a processed form of data, then what exactly is data? So that is where we have a next definition for data. So if we will go back to uh, the definition of information once we are more clear about data. Let's now look into what exactly is data. Look at this particular point which says data are facts and statistics. Data are facts and statistics. A couple of important words there. Collected together for reference or analysis. For reference or analysis purposes. So guys, we have Two very important points here with respect to data. One, there are certain facts. And two, it's certain amount of statistics. Statistics in the sense you have figures and numbers. Facts, statistics collected together for and two different uses of data. Is one, it could be for your referential purposes or it could as well be for your analysis. Right. So data is nothing but facts and statistics collected together for reference or analysis. Now, there could be a question immediately when we are talking about fact. Now, what do you mean by fact? Fact always need not be expressed only in terms of numbers. Facts can as well be expressed in terms of actions. Facts can also be expressed in terms of theory. Right. So, that is where data takes a couple of aspects. Data is a set of values of both things which are qualitative in nature and things which are quantitative to the very important things there that one it is qualitative and then it is 
quantitative as well. So to sum it up guys, data is all about what? Data is about facts and statistics which are collected for two of those purposes being reference and analysis. Yeah, so that is about data. Now considering this definition of data, let's go back to the definition of information where we are now talking about data that has been processed. Now when I am talking about data, we are just talking about mere facts and statistics which are of you know real no use to anybody. Now when does this get to be an information like for instance data that has been processed into a form that is meaningful. Now if I break the definition there and stop it, still it is little vague to understand as to to whom it is meaningful. So the next part of the story is meaningful to the recipient. Understood? So now as I break down the definition, I have three parts right in the definition. What is information? Data that has been processed. Into what? Into a form that is meaningful. Meaningful for whom? To the recipient. And this is how it stretches up. Now let us consider an example in this particular case. Let's say ICAI is starting coaching classes. So they have put up an advertisement in front of the institute saying that classes are starting from the 15th. Now considering this particular fact whether this is data or information. Now ICAI is starting classes on 15th. Now we all know that there are three levels in CA. CPT, IPCC and final. Now that particular statement made by ICAI the classes are starting on 15 is pretty much vague. We are not really sure as to what classes are starting. So that is where it is mere data. It's a fact. Yeah, classes are going to start. That's a fact. And facts straight away represent data. Now let's say a CA student is walking past through the institute and looks at that banner. And he is not able to figure out as to what classes are starting. That is where we seek a little more clarity. What is that clarity that we need? Which classes? 15th of which month? And what exactly are the classes? Where exactly they are held? What are the timings? For a CA student, all these are pretty much important in that particular advertisement. Right? Let's say an engineering student is walking by and an engineering student sees the same banner. And he is just looking at it and seeing that, okay, CA classes are starting. That's it. For him, it's just a fact that in that particular building the CA classes will be held. That's it. He doesn't have any relevance to what classes or he is not looking for any of those points that I've highlighted for a CA student because for him it is of no use. So did the content change in either of these cases? The answer is no. Both of them saw the same content but for one there was a few more questions to be asked and for the other, it didn't make any real sense. So, what exactly transformed data into information? It is the perception. It is about how we view it. It is about how we see that particular aspect. So, the perception is what determines data or whether it is information. Now, considering the fact that it is information, it is from the eyes of the recipient and that is what is being told there. Right? So, as a matter of fact, all that you need to understand is three parts of this definition right now. That is data being processed into a form which is very meaningful and it should be meaningful to the recipient. This is what is the idea behind the information's definition. But still we are not done. A little bit of definition is still pending. So now what part of this data? So now if I have to convert the statement that ICI made which is merely looking at data that classes are starting on the 15th. So now if I make a statement like CAIPCC information technology classes or starting on the 15th of August at the second floor. Now that gives the complete information required for a student that is including timings as such. Right. So which is what a recipient is looking at. Now after you add all this data to uh, the earlier data, it now becomes more meaningful to the person. One more important question that arises right now is, is this also informative or educative 
to the engineering student? No, not even now. Because when in the first place, that line itself didn't make any sense to him. When you add a few qualitative aspects to it, how will this make any new sense? So it still continues to be that this makes only some value to the recipient alone. So unless you have the right recipient, you can't call it information. Clear about these three points guys? Right, so first thing is about data, then is it about being meaningful, then it is about from the recipient. Now, unless it adds some value to me, unless any data which is meaningful adds any value to me, I can't call it as information. So in that context, we are talking about two words which are being perceived value or real value. We are talking about real or perceived. Certain number of times, information is bought by people. Now talk about data agencies which merely collect data like all these uh, credit card agencies. You get random calls from credit card agencies. Where do you get all those numbers from? Where do the credit card company gathers all this? So there are data collecting agencies where you know they collect data and they arrange it in a form meaningful. A meaningful here, it is meaningful to the company which is looking out for that. Then they give it to their call centers and that's how you get calls from random people or random banks even when you don't know or you have not registered to them. Right? So these are all data collection agencies. So unless these data collection agencies find the real recipient who is having some value to what they collected, it doesn't become information to them. So what exactly is information? Is a meaningful and processed form of data which is now having some value. Obviously a question arises that what kind of value? It could be either real value that is you are actually seeing some value in it that is now like say you spend 5000 rupees in buying all that data from the data collection agency. So you believe that the information is worth 5000 rupees. There is a real value of 5000 rupees to the information. At the same time you have not paid anything but you've got some information probably like you know you have an information about a thief or you have an information about a terrorist group or an organization which you're supposed to give it to the government now that information you don't know how much value it has but you know that definitely it has a very high amount of value it is an issue of national security so you know that this particular information has a greater amount of value but what is that amount? You can't determine that exactly. Which is called as perceived value. There is a perception. Yes, this value is worth it. But for how much? So you are not very clear about as to how much that particular value will be. You understand what I am saying? So that exactly in this particular context will determine as to information having two types of things. That is one, it has a real value or it might either have a progress, I mean it might have a perceived value. Right? So, till here what we have seen in the definition is information is data that has been processed into a form that is pretty much meaningful for whom? Obviously the recipient which is having two types of values either it being real value or perceived value. And now to conclude the definition why are you collecting all this? Right? It's more important for us to understand why are we collecting all this? It's more important for us to understand why we are collecting all this. Obviously information is collected by anybody for the sake of decision making. Uh, the immediate question arises that are you going to make a decision today or are you going to make a decision in the future? Right. So that is what is the ultimate part of using information. Either it will be useful for you now. Now coming back to the example that I gave you. Classes are starting on the 15th. Let us say I am on 2nd or 3rd right now. So two weeks later the classes are starting. Will you want to go to that class or not? So you can make a decision of either in future or probably you are on the 14th. Then you want to make a decision right now. right? So in the example, if you are making a decision right now, that will be a current decision. And if you are doing it on a later date, that will be a progressive decision. So to conclude the definition, this information which has value either in current or progressive decision making. Understood? So I have four parts 
which are very important in this definition, the joining of which will give you the complete definition as to what information is. What is information? It is data. But if I stop there, that doesn't add any value. So I'm talking about a little processed form of data. So information is processed form of data into a form that is meaningful to whom? Obviously the recipient and having real value or perceived value. And when is it used? Either now or in future that is current or progressive decision making. I hope you are clear with both these definitions about information and data. So data is part of information and information is something that is very much meaningful to the recipient which is helping him make current or progressive decisions. Clear about it? Alright, let's move on to the second part of our subject's title which is called technology. Then later we will talk about discussing the word information technology together. First let us discuss what is technology. Right? You colloquially nowadays keep hearing that you know, there's a lot of updated technology. Technology is changing. Technology is upgraded. Your phone is a technology. Right? I'm using the latest technology. These are what people constantly keep using with reference to this term called technology. What do you exactly mean by technology? Right? Now, earlier, probably we had a servant maid who used to wash clothes by banging it on the stone. Right? Over a period of time, what happened? We had washing machines to take care of that right probably we use a pot to make and drink cool water but then we had refrigerators then probably you had a air cooler then later you had a air conditioner earlier you used to listen things only in the radio then probably you had a television in television you had a huge box made of the CRT cathode ray tubes then we had plasma then we had LCD today it's the world of LEDs and probably today we have developed so much that we can fit in our world in size of my palm. Right. It's very simple that each one of you now carry a smartphone and probably you might right now be watching this also on a smartphone or a laptop which absolutely is technology. Right. Earlier probably you had to go to a class, sit there, listen to somebody, make notes. Right now see the facility that you have. Right now this exactly what you are doing is technology. So what is technology? Technology could be a method. Technology could be use of tools. Technology could be a scientific approach. Right? So technology as we define, let's go ahead and see what exactly technology is. Technology is collection of techniques, methods or processes used in either production of goods or rendering services or it's basically for accomplishment of organizations objectives now we all know that each one of us have certain set of objectives as individuals as businessmen or as students or as employees each one of them have their own set of objectives now as when you talk about objectives how do I achieve that objective let's take a simple example I want to call up somebody and that I want to speak to them and you know discuss a particular issue how do I do this? Either I can reach them directly by going to their house or the office. But in today's fast moving world, you don't have time to travel, meet a particular person in person and discuss about the facts. So probably what we do, pick up a phone, simply, do you think we should only call? We can make a video call, which is an exact way of how you and the other person sit opposite each other and talk to. Right? So, we have the latest technology brought in. So, what do you say latest technology as? Latest technology is something that has been improved. Technology has always been a particular means. You understand what I am saying? Technology has always been either a method or a particular technique. So, it has not changed the way how we are supposed to do things. But it's just that it is make even more better or it's even more faster in you know doing things so we have been doing things all out with or without technology but as technology has come in we have more and more easier ways of doing things technology is about a set of or a collection of various techniques methods or processes used in production of goods or services or in the accomplishment of objectives this too. so 
technology is about use of some technologies and I mean techniques and methods and when you talk about information it is about processing data into a meaningful form now that itself should trigger a point in your mind that when we join these two words and call them information technology that itself suggests us that data is now going to be converted into information using certain amount of technology and that exactly will be called as information technology what do you mean by information technology information technology or in short IT as it is called is the application of computers and telecommunications so the use of computers and telecommunications are pretty much synonymous to the word information technology right so like I just told you in the above definition that it's about techniques methods tools and other things is the collection of techniques methods so now you're going to use those techniques and methods and tools to probably convert data into information that's exactly what you're supposed to do with information technology so information technology being a concept is the application of computers and telecommunication equipment why now you have functions that you used to do manually which is now being done using computers what are those functions storing retrieving transmitting and manipulating data so you have data you want the data you know as such is the key term data when processed or converted will turn out to be information is something that we've seen any help that you take from computers and telecommunication networks probably in the likes of internet right anything that you do to store retrieve transmit or convert or manipulate the data that will probably be called as information technology so information technology is not an, is not a device it's a concept information technology is the application of computers and telecommunication to what are the functions store retrieve transmit and manipulate data often in the context of business or other enterprise the term is commonly used as a synonym for computers right Today, if we hear about something, some company doing some work, so you say you call it an ID company or an IT enabled company. What do you mean by an IT enabled company? Where 100% of the work is done with the help of computers. For example, one of the streams, what was pretty much difficult 10 years before was banking. Right? Now, with the scale of banking being increased, you can't imagine a bank's accountant writing down everything in a piece of paper or a book right or updating passbooks manually so thanks to internet and thanks to computerization we have concepts like core banking and internet banking which has made life easy so at any given point of time you can transfer your money at any given point of time you can receive fund at any given point of time you can do banking thanks to information technology it's only because of the use of computers that certain things have become pretty much easier one of which is banking and of course there are too many other sectors where we have improved for example for instance an idea which is very closer to you let's say in the game of cricket a batsman gets out by leg before wicket now imagine this being talked about in the 50s or 60s leg before wicket was a way of getting out only when the umpire makes a decision that he is out and probably you know that this speed at which the bowlers are bowling and the batsman gets out is pretty much it happens in split seconds and now you're not really sure whether it's really out or not but nowadays you have cameras set up in every angle where with the use of computers you can trace the movement of the ball which is called the hawk eye technology right hawk eye technology is what it takes an overlook from it and then probably it is projected on a screen whereby how the ball would have traveled and hit the wickets and then probably you can now comfortably and definitely tell that whether a batsman is out or not like before wicket by using the Hawkeye technology so thanks to computers and the use of information technology I have taken two simple examples of banking and cricket because you are more close to it right and we are using it daily or seeing it daily right there are n number of other areas where technology has taken over so information technology being a strategic buzzword today now every business that has been in has been using information technology 
and our idea about understanding information technology is in the context of business because as such you are going to have a lot of clients coming to you in future with these requirements and all clients of yours today are about using computers. So when they are using computers it is very important that as a chartered accountant you be aware of certain aspects of how computers operate, what are the fundamentals and how things run in a business environment. That is the reason why we are going to talk about information technology and this is how the origination of this subject in your CIPCC syllabus has taken place. That this subject for 50 marks is a very essential part of your curriculum so as to understand as to how things work here. Right. So that is what is the pretty much basic introduction guys talking about information, data, technology and the combination of all this to be information technology. Let me now give you a quick insight or an idea about what we will be discussing in this particular chapter or in this particular topic of information technology for 50 marks. 50 marks here have been broken down into 5 simple and very easy chapters and now that you have 5 chapters it is very simple for us to understand that's a pretty much limited syllabus but all that you need to understand is the limited syllabus is an advantage as such because your questions are going to come only from these five chapters and that is pretty much sure but one thing that you need to also understand is that now that there are only five chapters there's a chance of asking a question from each and every chapter so pretty much our focus should be on each and every chapter and as such you can see 50 marks or 56 or 57 marks including choice would be split up on these 5 chapters. So all that you need to do is to be thorough with each and every topic and you don't have to worry because I will take you through each and every topic as to what exactly we require. Just to give you an idea about what the topics are. The first and foremost topic that we will be dealing is business process management and information technology. Now like I basically mentioned information technology for you right now is being discussed in the context of a business. So the first and very important thing that we need to understand is what is a business and how things work in business and how does it play an important role for a business. Uh, IT how does it play an important role in the business. So this is the first topic where you will be discussing about business process management and information technology. So that is purely a management concept and its relevance to IT. So there is no much of IT exclusive discussion about IT in the first chapter. So it's going to be a lot of management oriented concept where you are just going to see how that concept will be talked about in the context of information technology. So your first chapter is a very basic chapter talking about all management aspects. So if you look at the breakup of your first chapter, it introduces you to the concept of BPM right introduces you to the context of BPM and BPR business process reengineering two of the very important management concepts guys here we are studying in information technology to understand the relevance of those management concepts with IT in bringing about an integration and significant improvement in business processes. So we are going to see how these two concepts called BPM and BPR are helping us to take it over through and what is the impact of IT on business process? Of course, IT always is a package. So it is like more like your uh, offers, buy one and get one free. So it, this is also very similar to it. When you buy IT, risk comes for free automatically, right? So when you buy IT, you are going to get those risks for free and you are supposed to now figure out ways to overcome those risks. So what are those benefits? What is the impact? What are its risks and benefits are also discussed in this particular chapter. Furthermore, it provides an incentive of different mapping systems like the NTT diagrams, data flow diagrams, you have various concepts to talk about with respect to data mapping. So broadly if you look at, there are three broad topics in chapter 1 which takes you through business process management, which talks about business process reengineering and which is talking about various mapping systems in the NTT. So that is your very basic chapter, not much of IT in that you have a lot of management fundamental concepts and you can see the use of IT in using those. Then chapter number 2 is all about IT fundamentals and basics. So that is pretty much very clear you can see the 
information systems and id fundamentals if you go deep to look into what it is chapter 2 on information technology and its fundamentals includes a discussion on relevance of auditing now that's where we as auditors have to play a role right and don't worry as i take you through i will make you play various roles sometimes as a manager in the company sometimes as the top level management making decisions sometimes as an auditor looking out for risks and of course suggesting the organization some recommendations on how to overcome those risks so don't worry we are going to play various roles to make our life easy in understanding this particular subject so it includes the discussion on relevance of auditing in business process the phase of system development life cycle system development is a concept whereby you are going for a system or a software development how are you going to do system or software development is pretty much discussed in this particular chapter and it's a very great insight for us to know and an overview of all the information system layers right we will be having six layers in information systems and we will go about discussing all of those along with it you will have the overview of the very latest technologies being talked about in devices like ipads ipods your android devices your ultra mobile computers all those are being discussed and it's a very important chapter from the exam standpoint because there are definite questions that are being asked from this particular chapter moving on today's life is all about connectivity right most of you spend a great amount of time on whatsapp and facebook and various other messengers right how is it all possible how is it possible that so many of these uh, applications that have taken over today you are like facebook twitter whatsapp and how is that they sustaining so well is thanks to networking and the concept of internet so your chapter 3 is a very exciting and interesting chapter on telecommunication and networks so i'm going to take you through how networks are constructed how they are created where their models and how they interact between networks and networks deals with one of those basic fundamental as to how you see how the entire world is now been in your pocket how entire world is connected so to be very clear it's actually a physical connection and we always view internet to be something that is invisible it is not it's absolutely a physically connected network and i'm going to take you through how it is physically connected in chapter number 3 chapter number 3 dealing with networks deals with topics such as fundamentals of networks components and functioning of the various communicating system the various types of network their architectures the chapter also provides an insight on working of internet which is what you're supposed to know and which is what i was just talking about working of internet and various technologies related to internet one of those very scoring and very easy chapters considering from the exam standpoint chapter 4 from the exam standpoint also has equal weightage as to what it is chapter 4 is talked about business information systems chapter 4 is going to talk about business information systems and this is what currently the world is on you're going to talk about management information systems you're going to talk about executive information systems now for instance like mukesh ambani has to make a decision and probably he can't rely solely on his employees so he might have to do a market research about it so how does he do a market research so he might use an executives information system to do that and probably today you have high end systems and solutions right for uh, artificial intelligence so all those concepts that are related to use of all these high level techniques that have been there today including environment uh, control methods your enterprise resource planning the software is related to edp and then probably expert systems a lot of concepts that are going to be discussed in this chapter which are of very much relevance to the current scenario so chapter 4 on business information system comprehensively covers in detail the various topics of business information systems that i have been talking about it takes you through core banking system customer relationship management enterprise resource planning and core banking software etc all those which are used worldwide business reporting through information technology and each and every person's role in the organization and the importance of access controls are outlined in this chapter for the sake of clarity of students understood so that's pretty much very clear that in chapter 4 it's going to take you through the latest technology and as well the application of all of these clear about this 
All right, let's move on to the last chapter in your syllabus where we are being talked about business process automation. Now, the first chapter has a pretty much relevant concept called business process automation where they are just giving you only an introduction as to what that particular concept is. But when you consider chapter number 5, it is going to tell you how you will be able to do that probably using a software. Right. So that is what is all about chapter number 5 where it is going to take you through how you are going to use an application software in automating various activities of your business. For instance, consider accounting. So if you want to do accounting, simply all that you need to do is for basic accounting you can buy a package like tally and use it. So if you are using tally, all that it says is you just have to pass the entries. The rest of it is all taken care whereby we are bringing in the concept of automation. Automation is all discussed about through software. So you can see there chapter 5 highlights various aspects pertaining to business process automation. In fact, it is an 8 step process and all the 8 steps are being discussed there in thorough detail. So and then of course today's world runs like a basic concepts like cloud computing. They everybody store their information on cloud. So what is cloud computing? How do you store information on cloud? What are the advantages? What are some of the disadvantages of storing in cloud? And probably we have other concept called as grid computing. So what is the concept of grid computing? So they are taking through uh, concepts which are very much latest like the cloud computing, IT virtualization, grid computing, computer delivery model, all those emerging and latest technologies in the last chapter. Right? This is what you have as a very limited part of your syllabus guys. It's only 5 chapters and each chapter is of equal importance because you have a paper for 50 marks to answer. And probably with choice you have a 56 or 57 marks paper which makes it very easy for us to score provided you are going to know the topics. Right. So that was my little insight on the concept of information, information technology and a basic idea about your syllabus. This being discussed as one of the toughest subjects in group 2, I am here to make your life easy with respect to this particular subject. So in my next session, I will be talking about chapter number 1 where we will be discussing about the business process management and its relation with IT. So in my next session, I will continue with chapter number 1 on business process management and IT. Thank you.